Hello, everybody. It is your internet best friend, Do With Dan. How are you doing today? You having a, you having a good, what's today? The Friday, Saturday? I think Saturday. Today was pretty busy for us as far as like days around the house are concerned. We had the spare bedroom prep for my parents when they come into town for Christmas this year. We also put up the Christmas tree and clean the house up and start doing a little bit of decorating. Adult shit, right? Anyway, in the spirit of Christmas, I figured I'd kind of go over a video that a lot of people have asked me about for like years, right? You know, people have always wanted me to show off my gun collection on YouTube and I've always felt kind of weird about putting my guns on the internet out there for everybody to see. So I decided not, I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to show off my whole collection. But it, it's nice. It's got, I've got some cool pieces, but you know, it's certainly no Demolition Ranch, right? Uh, instead, I chose... Uh, three, ten? ten? Ten of my favorite guns or at least 10 of my favorite type of guns that I think you guys will enjoy. And they're all a little bit different. Yeah, some are similar, but for the most part, they're all pretty much different. Let's keep it simple. Now, first up on my list, and this one makes a lot of sense, but this is the first rifle I ever got. Kept it at my grandfather's house. He's the one who taught me how to shoot it. He taught me how to do all of, like the, the honey shit, you know, stuff like that. And taught me gun safety as a young kid. And uh, that's why this one has a very specific spot in my heart. You know, it's nothing crazy. It's not even a big caliber. It is a, uh, it's a Savage Arms 243. You know, pretty standard deer hunting rifle, I would say. You know, I know it's not, no, no, 30 off six, not no 30, 30, you know. This is the gun that I learned about firearms on. You know, I thought that was really cool. My grandfather really spent a lot of time when I was a kid with me about firearm safety. And we'd go behind the dump, which is what we call it. It was this giant iron ore mine that he used to work in in Minnesota. And we would go behind them, which would he'd call it the dump, which is where they would basically dump all of the uh, material that wasn't iron ore, right? <laughs> Just piles of rocks. They make these like fake mountains in Minnesota, right? I've got a video or two of me exploring behind the old dump back in the day on the channel, which uh, you guys should go check them out. That's really cool. But this gun does have like a, like I said, a, a soft spot in my heart and it's got a really old blazer scope. Three to nine by 40, which is uh, kind of nice, you know? I don't think we were exactly putting like Nikon or anything that was like top tier quality back in the day. Just learning how to shoot a gun, you know, but uh, pretty neat. I like it. Ah, and to keep with the realm of simplicity, this is another very, uh, just a basic firearm that I like. You know, it's all fucking pieced together. It's it's just a shit build, you know, like a budget budget AR-15 build. In before I end up on woke Johnny Bravo memes for some, some shit tier guns like this, but this is a locally made AR-15 uh, Talon Arms here in uh, Kennesaw, Georgia. They make super affordable AR-15s. And like I said, this one's been pieced together with shit tier quality, different types of accessories. And this has got key mod, which everyone fucking hates. I get it. You know what? Fuck it. Uh, they removed the dislike button on YouTube, so you can't even like thumbs down the video. I don't give a fuck. Key mod's awesome. 1911 suck dick. Buy a high point. I seriously went to my local gun range one day and just pieced together FDE parts that matched because I just wanted an FDE colored rifle. But again, Runs great, never had any issues. Although I have not had a whole lot of experience with the uh, Delta drum. I mean, X Products has always made pretty awesome stuff. So like I said, I've only run like 100, 200 rounds for this thing. So I don't have a whole lot of time with this particular mag, but a lot of people say they're good and I haven't had any issues yet. So just like the most okay AR-15. I didn't choose the nicest one that I have. I didn't choose the shittiest one that I have. I didn't choose one in 300 blackout. I didn't choose one in 762. I chose the most mid quality AR-15 that I had. That's the best part about it, man. It's a tool. Next up is uh, Smith & Wesson 629. I know I've had this on the channel before. I don't think that I've done much with it, but you know, it's 44 Magnum, chamber check. I feel like you're either a Smith & Wesson fan or you're a Colt fan when it comes to revolvers. Or you like to eat paste and you like Taurus, whatever. I don't want to judge anybody. But something about Smith & Wesson's Revolvers have always just, they, this is always what's done it for me, you know? I like the way they look, I like the way they feel in the hands, and I especially like the full frame and barrel design on these. Isn't this a modern version of what Dirty Harry used too, by the way? I don't know, if I'm wrong, I can cut that out. I wanna say this was my first pistol. Maybe that my parents bought me when I was younger? I, I believe so. I believe that's where I came into possession of this gun, and uh, which is awesome because I've always known that this is the, the pistol, the type of revolver that I've always wanted, so. It worked out. In keeping with the theme of pistols, the next one up on the list is uh, my SIG uh, P320X5, which is more of a, a competition running style gun. It's got the vented ports up top, flared in weighted magwell on the bottom. And obviously this one was on the channel before too when we hydro dipped this with my buddy Hydro Dips. And uh, we did this like cool oil slick pattern design. Really, really neat looking. I don't know if you guys can see that or if you guys care. And I'm not really one for jazzing up firearms, I kind of think that guns should be left the way they are, you know? I don't mean that without like attachments, like attach them the fuck up. But I mean, as far as like trying to like pizzazz a firearm, it kind of, to me, it 
it's gonna sound ridiculous, but kind of reduces the use of it. But like, I would never use this firearm to defend myself, and right, you know, kind of deal. Like, I, I specifically got this one to learn how to shoot better and to uh, to practice my pistol skills, which uh, I have not done much lately. So, great shooting gun. It's got the match grade trigger, the flared magwell, the vented slide. Overall, I would I would say this is probably one of the best shooting, if not the best shooting nine mil that I've ever shot. But I just like SIG's pistols, man. I, I carry a SIG in, in the Corvette when I go out, and uh, I also usually keep one on me when I'm in the, uh, the pickup truck. So I like their guns. I like the way they fit. I like the way they feel. All right, let's uh, let's let's transition into something a little bit more different. Let's go shotguns. Um, I picked this bad boy up in Texas. This is uh, uh, it's an AK platform shotgun, and this is overall, I'm pretty sure. Uh, a big piece of shit. I'm, I'm almost positive that this gun is considered to be a big piece of shit. I, I kind of knew that when I bought it. You know, I just wanted something that was fun. I, I've got a rule about whenever I go through Texas, I have to buy a gun. And uh, we were in a very small town of Texas and I was like, you know, I'm gonna support, I'm gonna support local business, you know, and whatnot. And uh, I got this thing for like 500 bucks, you know, AK pattern shotgun, 12 gauge with these big old plastic dummy mags. I hate these. Oh, that doesn't even feel good. What the fuck? Jeez, that feels that feels bad. It's heavy in all the places that it shouldn't be, but uh, I bet this thing would probably shoot some shells. I haven't even shot it yet. Like, I've got a couple of guns that I haven't even shot yet. Uh, I've got a lot of guns that I haven't shot yet, actually. What? Look, yo, you gotta listen to the name. So this is uh, the JTS. JTS, I guess, is a gun manufacturer in Katy, Texas, right? But I'm pretty sure this is a Chinese print AK that they import into the US and they just rebrand, right? That's how that works. I'm, I'm like 90% positive that's how it works. Because uh, up here, it tells you who makes it. Chongqing Jiangxi Industries. <laughs> yeah, it's American assembled. Pick up some AK shotguns from Chongqi Chankong Ta. Chong, it's literally Chongqing Janashi. Oh my God. I can't believe I bought this thing. But uh, yeah, I bought one and I haven't shot it yet, but I'm, I'm a firm believer in shotguns. I, they're my favorite, man. I love shotguns more than any type of gun. It's always been like my, my favorite type of gun in video games, in real life, whatever. Movies, you name it. Like shotguns are so cool. This thing's got a choke in it. Yeah, it's got a choke. This is gonna definitely put me on WJB. Let's stay with uh, let's stay with shotguns for a little bit because I've had this one for a very long time. I've come across guns, I've, I've bought guns, I've sold guns, I've traded guns. But this is one that I just will not let go. And again, you want to talk about piece of shit shotguns. Here we go. This is an AR-15 style shotgun that I found at a gun show in Florida called an Arm Armagon G12. Uh, which doesn't even sound real. One thing that's consistent about this gun though is that the chamber has always felt really good. This one's also choked as well in the barrel and it also has a gas adjustment here. So if you're, uh, you can adjust it and it'll shoot better. I had a, actually I had a video on this thing like years ago before I even understood how these kind of guns worked. But yeah, and the whole thing besides the actual barrel and upper receiver is polymer. Your shroud here, polymer, your upper receiver, metal has to be. The entire lower receiver is polymer. The grip and the adjustable buttstock, polymer. The whole thing is polymer. I think I paid $400 for this thing. And for the life of me, I've never been able to find another one in the wild. These take a big ass drum mag or they, they'll take regular stick mags too, but I have a big ass drum mag, like a 20 round drum mag that fits into this thing. And you can just dump it, man. It just goes and goes and goes. Pro probably got a couple of thousand shells through this piece of shit. And just keeps eating it, man. I just kind of, I just refuse to get rid of it though, man. I've had it for so long. It's such a hunk, but it keeps working. Like it's got, it's got Picatinny rails on the bottom that are polymer that are just literally screwed on. I bet I could break it with my fingers right now if I wanted to. And I believe this is the last shotgun on the list. This one's got an interesting story, which if you guys have been following me for a long time, I know some of you guys have. This one's been on the channel forever. And it's got a really cool correlation because this is a, a reproduction, a Chinese reproduction of a Winchester model 1887, um, which is easily my favorite gun in history is the lever action shotgun, specifically the 87, but lever action shotguns in general are like the coolest thing in the world to me. Laura and I were in Atlanta one time back when we, we used to live in St. Simons Island, which is way down south of Atlanta, like six plus hours. And we found ourselves in Atlanta for, I don't remember the occasion. And the only people that I had ever seen sell these was a place that you guys might be familiar with, uh, Moss's Pawn Shop. 
and uh, they had they had these sitting up next to a Terminator poster, and I had like 400 bucks at the time, you know, it's all I could scrounge together, and I was like, darling, I know you're not gonna understand this, but we have to stop at this pawn shop so I can buy a lever action shotgun. <laughs> she thought it was the most ridiculous shit ever, and she waited in the car for like two hours while they ran my background check, and it was, uh, it was a nightmare, it really was. Honestly, this has been like probably by far my favorite gun that I've ever owned, and that includes the Desert Eagle and the Gold AK, which is coming up next, I mean, you name it. Like, this is just such a cool, a cool piece for me, and it's not even the real thing, it's a Chinese knockoff, you know? It doesn't chuck shells very well. If, if you're running like two and three quarter or three inch shells, it does not like to eject them. You have to really give it a full fucking chuck for it to come out. So I've always thought about going in there and cleaning up the parts on the inside and making it try to shoot better, but you know, who has the time for that kind of shit? It makes a really cool sound though. All right, so the next one is a gun that gets used a lot in my life. Not because I'm like in the shit and I need that gun all the time, but just because uh, I try to shoot this gun any chance I get, throw it in my truck all the time, or in the car if I'm going somewhere, because it's such a nice little concealable 9mm uh, AR style platform, and man, it's so fucking dirty. It's got like dirt and grime and grease everywhere because it goes everywhere. But uh, it's a good little PDW, man. Uh, it's made by Palmetto Arms, it's 9mm, which this one's been on the channel before too. As a matter of fact, this one blew up in my hand in a video and since then I fixed the issue. I was using like off-brand Korean mags that uh, have a slightly different feeding lip style so it flat nose the bullets. Shoot, it shoots out of battery like that's a terrible thing but this gun shoots so far out of battery it's not really safe but since switching to like regular Glock brand magazines in this little 50 round drum mag that I run in this thing all the time I have not had an issue since. Look how far this is out of battery. still fires. It's not even halfway closed. None of my none of my AR15s do that. So other than that tiny little safety issue that I would consider to be a major oversight, it's one of my favorite guns. It's it's accurate up to like 100 yards, which is so crazy to think that a 9mm with like this four and a half inch barrel gets any sort of muzzle velocity. And uh, it's got a Romeo X5 on it that I run on like a lot of my ARs. And the cool part about it is that it's got a sensor on the inside that detects when you're moving. So if it's off, you go to pick it up, it automatically turns back on for you. But you set it down for a couple minutes and it turns off and you don't have to worry about the battery dying. But no matter when you pick it up, you know that the battery is gonna be good. It's gonna be the right brightness. It's gonna be zero every time. It's a, uh, it's a solid option. I like it a lot. Of course, I have this little adjustable pistol brace on the back, which makes it Great for all sorts of things, and around the 50 round drum mag, which makes this a good little compact personal defense weapon. I like it a lot. It's, I bring it just about everywhere I go. And uh, last on the AR style list is this one. Again, a uh, this is another Talon Arms, which is you know the the local company in Kennesaw that makes AR-15. This one is uh, just a little PDW that I put together that I would I really wanted, you know. It's got some nice stuff, extended mag release, extended charging handle. Nothing crazy about this gun. It's just uh, overall, this thing is a fucking laser and uh, it's compact, it's tight. It feels really good to shoot. The muzzle flash is bigger than the AKs, I think. I mean, this has got probably the biggest muzzle flash I've ever had on a firearm. But overall, great firearm, I like it a lot. And last but not least, the internet's favorite almighty gold AK. Now. Uh, the best thing about this is that it's not even like a really a good AK. It's actually a pretty shitty AK. It is a uh, Wasser 10 PAP M85, which means that it doesn't even shoot 7.62. This is, I've gotten the most flack in the world for that, is the fact that this thing shoots 5.56. Five, I don't give a fuck. You can't even dislike the video. But if you guys remember a couple of years ago, I did a video with Brandon Herrera, the AK guy and uh, he, he, him and I got together and we built this AK and then we sent it off to Titanium Gun when they did the uh, titanium and nitrite coating, which is the only way to do a gold AK. Like, this is not actual gold plating and I'll tell you why. Um, actual gold plate, you can, you can gold plate anything, man. It's really not that hard. The problem is with actual gold plating is that when you shoot it, it gets hot. When, you, when it gets hot, it flakes off. There's nothing for it to adhere to. If I were to have done actual gold, it'd have been cheaper. That's the fucking truth. If you want me to be honest with you, it'd be way cheaper to plate this thing in gold than it would be to do the whole thing in titanium nitrate coating because they have to get everything to a polished finish. And I do mean 
absolutely everything, including every inch of internals in this gun. The entire gun, the trigger, the spring, the guide assemblies, everything, the bolt, the bolt face, the firing pin, everything in this gun has been titanium nitrite coated and uh, which is a it's great because it'll withstand so much more heat and pressure than regularly untreated metal would it's 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 beneficial for the gun um second of all it looks fucking awesome i think easily this is one of the coolest things i've done on the channel along with brandon uh which i really appreciate his help for but there's a lot of reasons why it was so cool i think i think we were actually the first people to do this to, to do tin coating gold on an ak like this um, i couldn't find any other person that had done it and when i called titanium gun who were like the only people doing it in the business they'd never heard of anybody else doing one so i think i think we had struck a chord and made the first gold titanium gun which is fucking awesome like isn't that really cool to have something like that underneath your belt uh, but the gun is 100 percent working and functioning you can probably tell by all the soot that's built up at the top of the barrel because i don't clean it because it's an ak you're not supposed to clean these it's not a glock you know you're not supposed to shoot it every magazine and clean it it's not your mom's vibrator you're not supposed to, you're not supposed to clean it every time you use it as far as i'm concerned that and a glock are the same thing but yeah this is uh everyone asked me like why would i do this and it was it was a vanity project man i didn't i don't care that it's not a prime ak i think the fact that it's a shitty ak makes it even better it's a statement piece man it's it represents everything that's wrong with america if you ask me like this gun right here is uh everything wrong with America because it's the wrong caliber, it's the wrong booster, there's no stock, so it's not really fucking usable. It's gaudy, it's flashy, it's just fucking, uh, it's American as fuck. And you're thinking to yourself, Dan, how can a Russian style gun be American? When was the last time that we didn't culturally appropriate something and make it cooler? That's what I thought, that's what I thought. I have a couple of videos about the gold AK, at least it's featured in there. So if you wanna see this thing firing, and uh, sh fucking annoying people at the gun range, stuff like that. There's tons of videos on that in my channel. Yeah, I think uh, I think that's the last gun. Is that the last gun? Yeah, that's the last gun. We're done, that's 10 guns. We, I showed off 10 of my favorite firearms that I have, and there's some guns that didn't make the list. Some, some of you guys are probably like, why didn't the Desert Eagle make the list? And that's because I don't know where the fuck it is. I, uh, I consistently lend that gun to friends or like lose it. So like, it could be anywhere, I don't know. I think I end the video here, right? That's what, that's what we'll do. Um, instead of just like a regular outro where I just tell you guys like, I hope you have a good day or something stupid like that. How about this? Um, tell me something that's good. Tell me something good. Tell me something that's good with your life. I don't, I don't care how big, I don't care how small it is. Just, uh, just, just tell me something that, that's good for you. I wanna know, I do read every comment. Like even if I don't have a chance to like it, sometimes I read comments not signed in, but I read every comment. So yeah. Um, I wonder how y'all are doing. And uh, I fucking, I love you guys. And I appreciate you guys. And I can't wait to see you in the next video. All right. I'm gonna go lay down. <laughs>